projectile motion. The setup is somewhat similar to experiment one, with the exception we have an additional piece of track on the horizontal. Place that so that that track is over, the, uh, the end of that track is over the edge of the table by half a centimeter or centimeter. Place the meter stick even with the edge, flat. Make a mark at the end here. Place a piece of tape there or make a mark there so that you have one meter on the horizontal from here to here. That's the distance over which you're going to measure the time. <clears throat> Place the upper end of the track 10 centimeters, approximately 10 centimeters from here for the first trial. <clears throat> then you need to locate the position of the end of this track on the floor. To do so, take your plumb, plumb line, and take a piece of tape or something on your floor. If you don't want to mark directly on your floor. And locate the position on the floor that's directly below this. You'll be measuring from that position. Now you're ready to um, see where the ball is going to land. <clears throat> Mark position at the on the uh, track. Uh, I use, I'm using the same position we used on the first experiment, which is one meter up from the end of the meter stake. That's a, a pretty good place to use. Just so you're using the same spot all the time is all that's really necessary. Release the ball from there in a trial run and see where the ball goes. <coughs> then. Place a piece of paper on the floor at that point. <clears throat> you're going to place a piece of uh, carbon paper on top of that shortly. Now you're ready to make the trial for trials to get the time. You want to measure how long it takes the ball to go from here to here, distance of one meter, in order to determine the velocity with which the ball comes off the end of the track. To do that, <clears throat> place the ball at the same spot each time up here, release it, start the timer there, stop the timer there. Measure that time at least three times until you get three uh, consistent times. Once you've done that, you're ready to, to determine how far the ball goes on the floor. Place the carbon paper face down on the paper that's on the floor. <coughs> and release the ball. Do this three times. Releasing the ball from the same point each time. Now you're ready to see how precise it was, if it was. Those three spots, fairly close. Sometimes it's difficult to tell if there's more than one spot. Measure the distance on the floor now from this first point you mark to the center of that grouping. That is your horizontal range. While you're at it, go ahead and measure the distance from the floor to the bottom of the ball just as it comes off the track. And that distance is your vertical distance y. That's used to calculate the time that it takes the ball to travel from here to here. <clears throat> 